Well, good morning, and welcome to worship today. It is wonderful to be together on this Lord's Day to come and worship, to praise our God, and to bring our petitions and concerns before Him, and to be nurtured by His Word. Uh, just a few announcements as we get started this morning. First of all, uh, if you didn't notice, there are cards on the table uh, out in the fellowship hall. Be sure to sign those uh, for folks who, who we haven't seen in a little bit here. Uh, and also following the service, uh, we have our annual congregational meeting, and we'll have that downstairs also in the fellowship hall. Uh, and then third, uh, we want to welcome Pastor John Kaiser back with us this morning. Uh, I was on retreat. If you're wondering why he is here when I'm here also, uh, earlier this week, I was on a retreat. Uh, yes, I was up at Mille Lacs Fishing. That's a retreat. Uh, but we, uh, we had slow fishing, let me tell you. We did not catch many. Uh, but that's that group of pastors that I've been a part of throughout this year. We went to Phoenix, Arizona last January. I know, really tough. Uh, and now I got to go fishing. So that, is, that was the conclusion of our time together uh, as a pastor's cohort. And we got to spend it together, Christy and I. As we come to worship today, our call comes from Psalm 62. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Let's go to our God in prayer this morning. Oh, Lord, our God, we are so thankful that you are God Almighty, that you are good, that you are loving, that you are sovereign over all things. And, Lord, amidst all those powerful images, you also remind us that you are our refuge, <clears throat> that, Lord God, in, in the restlessness and, uh, and in the hurriedness of this world that we live in, that our lives take part in, Lord God, you remind us to rest in you to be refreshed, to be renewed. And Lord God, even in the midst of turbulence, in the midst of adversity, that you promise to be a refuge for us. And Lord God, that continues not only in our days here on this earth, but that continues into the life to come. And so, Lord, we pray that we would find rest and that we would find renewal in you today. All this we pray in your Son's precious name. Amen. As we come before God this morning, let's stand to sing, All Who Are Thirsty. Come, Lord Jesus. 
Brothers and sisters, our God is with us, and he grants us his blessing this morning. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's continue to praise our God with as the deer. As the deer panted for the waters of my soul, long after thee, you alone of my heart desire and I long to worship thee. You alone of my strength, my shield, to you. Spirit, yield. you alone are my heart, desire, and I long to worship thee. You're my friend, and you are my brother. be seated. For our call to confession this morning, we turn to the words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians, and, uh, and he's speaking to them uh, about what he hopes to see in them, that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, as they live out their faith, as they are built up in living lives worthy of their calling and of salvation, he speaks to them in this way. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, by having the same love, by being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. 
And so as we go into our prayer of confession this morning, we go with those words, we go with that reminder that this is what we are called to. Brothers and sisters, that we are built up not only in Christ, but that we are built up and renewed in our relationships with one another and with this world. And so I invite you to join me as you read on the screen our prayer of confession. O Lord, our merciful God and Father, for the times we have lied to one another and the times we have been lied to, heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have laughed at another's pain and the times we have been laughed at, heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have spoken when we should have remained silent and the times we have remained silent when we should have spoken, Heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have not respected another's freedom to be different from us, heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have betrayed a friend and the times we have been betrayed, heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. O God of heaven and earth, you emptied yourself of your power and you became a helpless baby in order that you might heal the sick world. Teach us to empty ourselves of the things that destroy us and keep us alone. Empty us of our jealousy, of our meanness, of our fear of others. For Jesus' sake, amen. And so Paul goes on to say, again, he can look at his life and he can see all sorts of things that that might give someone the impression that they are enough, that they are sufficient enough, that they have done enough for themselves and for their salvation. And yet Paul says, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Indeed, Paul wasn't looking that far back when he wrote those words to think about those events, to think about the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. And yet he had come to know by faith that both of these events, the death of Christ was for his redemption, the the rising again of Christ was for the promise of our own eternal life and new life, both now and to come. And so brothers brothers and sisters live and rejoice in the hope we have of Christ. Let's sing, not what my hands have done. Have done, 
As we go to our God in prayer this morning, just a, a couple of updates to the prayer request in the bulletin. Uh, first of all, I, I talked to, to Betty Benzoberin last night, and uh, she said that Josh Burns is now out of the ICU, uh, her nephew, but he is still being hospitalized uh, and is in need of oxygen. He is going through a, a slow recovery from COVID, uh, so continue to keep him in your prayers, but we're glad to see uh, that there is some improvement for him. Uh, also for Kelly Ashton, uh, we want to remember her. Again, she had uh, some worsening symptoms this week, and yet she got great reports from the doctor uh, and is, is continuing. Uh, it's a struggle uh, in her battle with COVID, uh, and she plans to see a cardiologist uh, this week. So continue to keep her in your prayers. Let's go to our God in prayer this morning. Oh Lord, our God, we are so thankful that as we awoke this morning and as we made our way to church, perhaps as we shoveled our driveways or snowblowed them just to get out of them, Lord God, we give you thanks for the beauty of your creation, for the reminder that you are the God who controls all things, that you are the one who watches over us, who protects us that you are the one who knows each of our days, you know even more so than the, the snowflakes and their uniqueness, Lord God, you know the hairs on our head. And Lord God, you count us worthy of your love because of your Son. Lord God, we are so thankful that you give us the opportunity to come before you in prayer, that you give us the opportunity to share of our concerns, that you hear us even when we forget to lift up things before you. Lord God, we come to you with a long list of concerns this morning, a, a long list of things that, that we desire for you to do in ways that we want you to intervene in our lives, in the lives of our loved ones, in our community, and in this world. And Lord God, we know that you are able. We know that you are sufficient to take care of these things that you desire to hear us that you desire for us to call upon you. And so, Lord God, this morning we continue to, to lift up to you those who are struggling in different ways, that are struggling with different illnesses, whether that's cancer, Lord God, as we continue to lift up to you, Ale and Mary Claire. And we pray that you'd be near unto them in, in both the good days and, and in the struggles of their cancer experiences. Lord God, we pray that you would bring great healing and comfort not only to them but also into the lives of their loved ones their families uh, who care for them uh, and who comfort them lord god we lift up to you those who are battling with covid right now as we continue to think of those who uh, who have had it a, a long time ago as we think of, of wesley simbro lord god we pray that that you continue to grant him health and strength each day lord god as we lift up to you this morning Carol, and, and as she continues to, to get better and better, Lord God, we pray that you'd be near unto her. Lord God, we lift up to you, Kelly and, and Josh, as they've uh, experienced uh, some of the, the worst symptoms. Lord God, as they've been battling, Lord God, we're so thankful that you have, that you've granted uh, this amount of healing so far in, in Josh, and pray that you would continue to be with him uh, and grant him strength and recovery. Lord God, be with those who attend to him as, as he's hospitalized. Lord God, we pray too for Kelly, that you would be with her, Lord God, that, that, you, would, that you would comfort her, that you would be with her and, and give her patience. Lord God, that she would be able to trust in you and depend on you in the midst of her fight. Lord God, we give you thanks for uh, that, that, that her boyfriend continues to, to improve and continues to, to stay stable, Lord God, and we pray that that, would, that that would continue on in the days ahead. Lord God, we come to you this morning on behalf of those who have had surgery and those who are looking forward to surgery. Lord God, we're thankful to see Patty here again with us, and, and Lord, that you've continued to, to grant her relief and healing. 
uh, in the weeks since her surgery, and we pray, oh God, that that would continue, that you would heal the, uh, the, the most inner parts uh, that she's had worked on, Lord God, and, and grant her strength. We pray too, Lord God, with joy for Kelly as, as she prepares for surgery in this week ahead, Lord God, we pray that you would allow nothing to come up that would interfere with the scheduling of that. We pray, oh God, that you would allow her back surgery to be successful. We pray, Lord God, for uh, the men and the women who will attend to her in that surgery and during her time in the hospital. And yet, Lord God, we also know that, that she's experienced what this is like before, and, and that the recovery is not necessarily without pain or, or completely easy. And so, Lord God, we pray that you'd be with her, that you would, on the other side of this, that you would bring relief into her body. Lord God, that you would allow this to restore mobility smoothly and quickly, Lord God, if it would be your will. Lord, we pray that you'd be with our nation today as we think about those who are continuing to lead our country. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the, the smooth and orderly transition of power. And Lord God, however we feel about political figures and, and political parties, Lord God, we come to you on behalf of our current president, our new president and vice president. And Lord God, we ask that, that you would grant them wisdom. Lord God, we ask that you would grant them uh, a, a peace and a strength as they go about their daily tasks. Lord God, as they listen to advisors, as they work through things with other world leaders, Lord God, we pray that your will would be done, and we pray that, that they would be dependent on you as well. Lord God, we pray that you would help us to honor them and to respect them. And Lord God, we pray that you would give them what they stand in need of each day. Lord, we continue to lift up to you those who are, are hurting today, those who have lost loved ones as we I think of Carol, and we think of the, the family of Roger and Joyce Cock, and, and Lord God, what they've gone through in the last couple of weeks, and losing uh, a mother and a father, of losing uh, an aunt and an uncle, and of losing a, a friend. And Lord God, we pray that you'd be near unto them, that you would extend your comfort and your peace, and the hope of your resurrection into the lives of those who mourn. Lord, we pray this morning that as we go further in this service, that, that you would speak by your spirit through Pastor John. Lord God, we give you thanks that, that he's able to be here with us today, that you've granted him safety in his drive-in. And Lord God, we pray that the message you've placed on his heart would be one that, that continues to connect into our lives, Lord God, that as we look forward to a, a new week, Lord God, and, and we don't know uh, what will come the next moment, we also don't know what will come the next day and the next hour. And so, Lord God, we pray that, that you would instill by your Holy Spirit the words that we need to hear in our hearts and our minds. And, Lord God, that we would be blessed through them. All this we pray in your Son's precious name. Amen. And so with that, I want to turn it over to Pastor John again. If you uh, weren't here last time, uh, John was a colleague of mine uh, out in South Dakota. He was 250 miles away in Rapid City. That's my son. So, yeah, he's... Uh, He's ready for you, so we'll turn it over to you. Thanks, John. Well, good morning. I'm happy to be here this morning. I was scheduled to be here a couple of weeks ago, and I'm glad that uh, you gave your pastor a chance to uh, spend time with his colleagues and when you left, and I uh, thought to come back again today. Which is, uh, I, I enjoy that, so thank you for, for having me back. Well, the would of boys and girls be willing to come to the front? Is that better? Yeah, I, I hear the echo. That's, uh, that's good. Okay, thanks, thanks for that, rather than uh, leaving me hanging here with you all not being able to hear. You guys ever get thirsty in church? Are you thirsty right now? Would you like a drink of water? 
No? Well, you don't have to have a drink of water if you don't want one. You can have a cup, though. But, tell you what, just in case you were thirsty, I brought some water along. Now, this water comes from the kitchen downstairs, so it's not special or anything. It's just the kind that you might get if you walked out to get a drink. You want some? I got to be careful that I don't spill. And it's not going to be a big drink. You're, you're the one who's not thirsty. Okay. All right. Now, you can drink that if you like, or you can take it back to your seat when we're finished. But uh, you know what it's like to be thirsty, because you are, right? When you're thirsty, you want water, and then you drink it, and the water tastes pretty good. Did you change your mind yet? No. Okay. <laughs> but you, you're, you didn't come here to church because you were needing a drink of this water, were you? You could drink that water at home. You came to church for another reason, right? Because we're worshiping, because we're worshiping Jesus. And, and there's something inside of us that gets thirsty for Jesus, which is not exactly like our thirsty for water, but, but kind of. You know, sometimes we're lonely, sometimes we're sad, sometimes we're really happy, and we just have to share it with somebody who don't know who. And, and Jesus is that person who helps us with that, helps us when we're sad, and lonely helps us when we're feeling, uh, uh, feeling well, ashamed because we've done something we shouldn't have done. And we can talk to Jesus and ask him to forgive us, and, and, then, and then it feels better inside, right? Jesus said in the Bible, and we're going to talk about that more in the service this morning, that if anyone is thirsty, they should come to him and drink. And he wasn't just talking about water like this. He was talking about the water that he gives that makes us feel all better inside. Now, I hope that you know what that's like. If you don't, listen to the sermon and uh, you talk to your mom and dad about that, but what it's like to, to know who Jesus is. I, I'll bet you that all of you know a lot about Jesus already, but I'm glad you're here in church this morning, and we're going to talk about the living water that Jesus gives. So, thank you for being brave enough to come up here this morning, and uh, just in case, I've got something else for you, too. This, this has the sort of the theme of the message on it. It says, he who believes in me from within him will flow rivers of living water. That's what Jesus says, and we're going to read that in the Bible here pretty soon. So I have that for you, all right? Let me pray with you. Ask Jesus to help us understand who he is. Oh, Jesus, you are the living water. You do something to us inside that's even better than a drink of regular water. Thank you for these boys and girls. We pray that uh, you will show yourself to them and that they will understand in all their lives. Uh, come to you for the things that you can give. We pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, careful with the water as you go back to your seats. Don't spill it, but... Uh, Oh, I'll take that back. Very good. Whoops. Now, as you can see, I brought some props with me this morning. Paper cups for the boys and girls, but uh, you recognize these. You've got things like that in your homes. Uh, you pour water in them, or coffee, or milk, or juice, or maybe Gatorade, or, uh, or something else. We, we all know what it's like to, to drink from a cup or a glass, nothing quite like a drink of something warm on a cold day, or something cold on a hot day. It's, it's refreshing. It uh, does something good deep inside. Well, the cups are there this morning, but I'd like for each of you not just to look at the cups this morning, but, but think of yourself as a cup, a container. You know, a cup isn't meant to be empty. You don't need a cup if 
uh, it's empty, you need a cup if you're going to fill it with something. Maybe you have a, a favorite cup or glass at home that, uh, that you fill with whatever it is that you like to drink. Think of yourself as a cup because we're meant to be containers. There's meant to be something inside of us too. Something that fills us, something that helps us be who we are. And so I'm wondering this morning, what are you filled with? It's good for us to think about that. What, what am I filled with? What, what's really there inside of me? What's really there inside of you? Are we filled with God's presence or with something else? Or is it that we feel sort of, sort of empty inside? I talked with the boys and girls about Jesus and how he does something to us on the inside, how he fills us. Uh, you know, that's what Jesus is meant to do. Meant to permeate our whole being, to, to fill us up like milk or water or coffee in a cup. Jesus talks uh, about that with us in John's Gospel in chapter 7. John chapter 7. I'm going to begin to read with verse 37 and listen to what Jesus says about, uh, about filling us and about water and about himself. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If a man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. On hearing, this, the, on hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Christ. Still others asked, How can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not the Scripture say that the Christ will come from David's family and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. That's God's word to us for this morning. Now the setting of the passage that we just read is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles that the, the Jews celebrated each year. Feast of Tabernacles was a week-long celebration that helped them to remember the exodus from Egypt. Each day during the Feast of Tabernacles, the, uh, the people would live in shelters made of branches. They'd take shelters made from tree branches and they'd live in them outside for a week to remind them of what happened during the time of their wandering in the wilderness. For 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness, lived in, lived in tents, lived in shelters outside. And, and during that time, God took care of them. And so the Feast of Tabernacles was a time of remembering how God provided for his people. One of the things God provided for them was, uh, was water from a rock. And so uh, one at a particular time, each day during the Feast of Tabernacles, someone would come from the Pool of Siloam out on the edge of Jerusalem and walk a half mile into the temple there and pour that water out at the base of the altar. A symbolic reminder that God provided for his people in the desert. And it was also a prayer that they would offer at that time, that God would provide for them, like he'd had water brought from a rock, that he'd give them the rain that they needed for the coming year. Now, something that was different in Jesus' day than it is today, uh, we don't usually think of that, but if I was preaching in the temple during Jesus' day, I wouldn't be standing here like I am now. Typical thing for rabbis to do when they taught 
was to sit down. Some passages of scripture tell us, you know, they read from the scroll and then they sat down. Well, that's the typical way. We, that seems strange to us, but it, it was a common thing for them. But our passage says that on the last and greatest day of the feast, as they were bringing the water up from the pool of Siloam, Jesus, who had been preaching, teaching there in the temple, he stood up. You know why? Because that would have drawn attention to themselves, just like I'd get your attention if I would sit down here on the pulpit this morning. Well, Jesus stood up. And as that water was being brought to the temple there, he said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Now, Jesus was talking about more than water, of course. We, we know that from other conversations that Jesus had. Once talking with a woman at Jacob's well, she came to draw water, and Jesus said, if, if you knew who I really was, then you would ask me, and I would give you living water. Jesus was talking about the deepest thirsts that we have. You see, not just for water, but, but for more. What are you thirsty for this morning? What am I? What are our deepest longings? What are our deepest needs? What are our deepest doubts, perhaps? Or our fears? Or the things that bother us? What are the dry and thirsty desert places inside of us? You know, maybe, maybe nobody uh, appreciates you. Maybe since you were a kid, you've thought that you ought to have more affirmation. Somebody to really care, notice you, appreciate you, encourage you. And maybe your desert is a desert of shame and guilt because of failures, mistakes, because of sins that you've committed in the past. Maybe the wasteland that you're living in is a wasteland of criticism and blame. Sometimes we have deficiencies in our character. Sometimes we have defects in our personalities that make us, uh, make us feel like we're in a wasteland. Dark and dreary, empty places in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. You know what those are in your life. I know what they are in mine. Sometimes it's the sins, the shortcomings, the failures that we've done. Sometimes it's the sins, the shortcomings, the, the failures of others. Uh, uh, some of the thirsts that we have are things on the surface we'd be willing to talk about and share them because they're kind of superficial. Everybody has certain ones. But maybe there are others so deep and dark, so different, that uh, we wouldn't really care to talk about that, wouldn't dare to share, wouldn't want to admit them. Maybe we hardly dare to admit them even to ourselves. Yet, whatever that thirst is, whoever you are, whoever I am, Jesus says to you and to me, Anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Jesus invites us to take the cup of our lives and to bring it to him. And he says, he'll fill it. For when Jesus fills, he satisfies the people of his day experienced that in various ways. That woman who came to Jacob's well, for example, she had some thirsts, some thirsts so deep that five husbands hadn't been able to satisfy them. But she came to Jesus, and she was never the same again. She told everyone in the town to come meet Jesus because he told her everything that she had ever done. And she thought he was the Christ. 5,000 people came to listen to Jesus preach, and they sat there all day, and by the time the day was ending, they were hungry. And so Jesus fed them. 5,000 people with a boy's lunch, 
five loaves and two fish, and so much food that there was food left over when they were all done. And it wasn't just the food. Because the next day when they came back, Jesus said, look, you, you came for the food that I gave you, but, but, but that's not it. Because I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes on me will never be thirsty. Don't work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life. Now, if we're going to be filled with what Jesus has to give us, then maybe, maybe there are things in our lives that will have to be emptied out. Things we'll have to lose, like uh, in our call to confession and our confession time this morning, uh, rebellious attitudes, sinful actions, jealousies, pride, self-sufficiency, selfishness. You know, you pour sour milk out of a glass and wash it out to put fresh milk in. Or when your coffee is cold and stale, you pour it out so that you can put fresh coffee in. Uh, we have to do that too with our inside lives. But it doesn't happen automatically, you know. There's some coldness and some staleness that's been a part of our lives for a long time, and it's, it's almost impossible to eliminate it. Sometimes it's been there so long that it, it leaves stains behind. But when Jesus fills us with his thirst-quenching power, when Jesus fills us with his life-giving presence, then we are refreshed. We're satisfied. We're renewed. We're made whole. We're restored. We're revitalized. Now, Satan's lie whispering in our ear is that if we have to give up some of those things, that it's too much. Uh, but the truth is that anything we sacrifice for Jesus will never regress, regret. Because Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, let him, let her come to me and drink. That's the invitation that Jesus gives, that invitation of his that echoes uh, throughout the New Testament. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, said Jesus, and I will give you rest. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, said Jesus, and they will be filled. So when you think of the cup of your life this morning, what's in it? Is it empty? Or is it full? Is it filled with Jesus? Or is it filled with other things that crowd Jesus out? Things that keep us from being fully satisfied. Things that shouldn't be there. That's the question we need to face this morning, you see. Will we come to Jesus? Come to him with the containers of our lives. Come to him with our thirsts. Come to him by faith and trust that he can refresh us and renew us. Come to him to discover the things that can be different for us in our lives. And the truth is, we can't do that on our own. We can't do that without the grace that Jesus gives, the grace that is there in his invitation. He, he calls us to come to him, and then he enables us to do that because, because he's gracious and loving. And he says he'll fill us. If we come to Jesus, you see, we discover that Jesus will do what he says he will do. He'll do something deep inside of us through his Holy Spirit. If we come to Jesus, uh, what Jesus gives is special. It's mysterious. It's the mystery of his grace for us, the, the mystery of a grace that's not magical. It doesn't make everything perfect all at once, but it does make us different deep inside. Not just with the assurance of heaven someday when we die, but with the assurance that life for us can be different. Because our passage gives us a picture, a picture that's uh, pretty 
profound when you stop to think of it. Jesus says that what he does for us inside causes a fountain, a river to flow that will be filled to overflowing. Whoever believes in me, says Jesus, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Now, what does that mean? How do you understand that? What Jesus is talking about is the Old Testament picture in Ezekiel chapter 47, a river that flows out of the temple and it flows down toward the Dead Sea and it gets deeper and deeper all the way. And that water turns, the, that salty, mineral-filled water of the Dead Sea into fresh water, that sea that fish can hardly live in has fish in it, according to Ezekiel 47. And there are trees on the banks of the river, and those trees have all kinds of fruit, and that fruit never fails. And then in the book of Revelation, in chapter 22, that picture is, is picked up, and it says those leaves on the trees on the sides of the river are for the healing of the nations. Quite a picture when you think about it. Imagine what it looks like. Because what Jesus does for us is a promise. A promise that whatever the cup of our lives looks like, whether it's you know a, a pretty one or just an ordinary one, whether it's uh, you've got nice designs and pictures or, or whether it's just plain, what Jesus does with the cup of our lives, no matter who we are, individually or collectively, he enables and he fills us so that we're not just full, we're full to overflowing, he says. He, he, he fills us so that we, we flow out with whatever he's done inside to change us flows out from us so that others can be changed too, so that, so that there can be wholesomeness and health and healing and happiness and all kinds of good things flowing out from us into our world. Jesus does that through his Holy Spirit. That water that he's talking about is the refreshing water of his Holy Spirit that equips us and energizes us so that others who come in contact with us can be refreshed, can be made whole in his presence. Now, we live in a broken and thirsty world. The evidence of the brokenness of our world is all around us. We know what it's like to be thirsty inside, but when we get acquainted with one another, with other people, we find out that they're thirsty and, and broken too. Maybe the best example of that that's going on right now is, you know, the COVID experience that we all have. We, we're dealing with it almost a, a year now pretty soon, but it's changed the way we think about things. You know, we used to take for granted uh, group gatherings and handshakes and hugs and all kinds of things, and now we, uh, well, we're not so sure if that's a good idea, and, and maybe it isn't. Well, we didn't used to have any idea what it's like to wear a mask, but now we do. And it's a good idea because it helps the disease not to spread. And, and you know... Lots of differences, lots of changes. We do things with Zoom chats now that we used to do in person. But you know what? Jesus helps us to deal with that. If you've been sick with COVID, you know that Jesus was there while you were sick. And if you're not sick, you know that Jesus has been the one that's helped keep you healthy. And, 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 and that's a wonderful thing. The presence and the power of Jesus, and in fact, our response. You know, we do a lot of things at home now that we didn't used to. And sometimes it makes us grumpy. And sometimes it, it gives us a bad attitude, or we just feel lonely and sad and all the rest. But Jesus is there helping us to deal with that. And the way that we deal with that, for Jesus' sake, has an influence on others. And it's not just the COVID thing that Jesus helps us to deal with. You know, there are all kinds of thirsts in this world. Some people in this world are, are, are thirsty for justice. Some of that comes out in, in racial incidents, like happened in the Twin Cities, where I live in this past summer. Uh, some people are, are filled with 
feelings politically and uh, some of that came out a few weeks ago and we were worried about the, uh, the transfer of power of the new president and the rest and, and there's still stuff inside of people. And Jesus says to us, come to me with that. Jesus says to us, come to me so that we can learn how to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because man's anger doesn't bring about the righteous life that God requires. If anyone is thirsty, says Jesus, come to me and drink. And then let what you have received flow out, and he says that to you and to me, into our world, into the, the places where we live, into our marriages and our families, into our sensitivity for one another, into the places where we work, to, to allow the presence of Jesus in our lives to touch the lives of others. And it's not going to be magic, but it is real. It brings wholesomeness. It brings health. It brings life and hope wherever we are. For Jesus' sake, streams of living water, life-giving water, like that water in Ezekiel 47, flowing out from the temple, flowing out from God's people, flowing out from God's church into the community to touch the lives of others in our world in all kinds of ways. That's what Jesus promises to you and to me. If we come to him, you know, there are people in this world who, who think that uh, they can just leave Jesus out or that they ought to leave him out because it's divisive and the rest. Some people think that if, uh, you know, Jesus does magical things and, and, and that he does, but it's not the kind of magic that makes everything all better forever and ever all at once. The promise is the hope that Jesus gives inside of us and through us to touch the lives of others in this world. It's an amazing thing. Amazing thing that we can count on, that, that, that we can be sure of, that we can live with. We need Jesus to teach us what it means to lay down our lives in the service of others. Like he laid down his life on the cross. He says, if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves, take up the cross and follow me. And how do we do that? <laughs> Only with the living water that Jesus has put within us. We can't do it on our own. Because it's not simple and it's not easy, but for Jesus' sake, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are, in, we are equipped, we are energized, we are renewed to do what we can, to do what God gives us opportunity to do, to keep laying down our lives in service to God's world. So that when we get hot and sweaty, when we feel dry and empty and not so sure what to do, when we're tired, when we're grumpy, when we're discouraged, when we're confused. And Jesus says to you and to me, you thirsty? Come. Come to me. Get a drink. Drink the living water and then get ready to, to go back to work. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we live in a thirsty world. And we're thirsty people too. We we have those feelings inside of us, and we, we, even when we know you, we need to be refreshed. We need to be restored. Encourage us. Help us. Give us energy. Give us wisdom. Thank you that we do that, not alone with you, but together as your people in community with one another. Thank you for this congregation and for the lives that people in this church touch. Bless, bless them. Bless Pastor Dan as he leads them. Bless the people of this congregation as they go off to their schools and uh, off to their work, off to the community. 
in all kinds of ways. Use them, Lord, according to your promise. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's stand to sing. Let him come and drink of the water of life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.
temptations comes my way. And when I cannot fall on you, Jesus, you're my hope and stay. My one defense, my right.